in this uh, problem uh, we discuss the properties of uh, a function defined on a sigma algebra of subsets of the real line and uh, that satisfies some of the properties like the uh, countable additivity over the countable disjoint elements and as we said before there is a motivation behind this uh, so this is always trying to understand uh, the concept of uh, a Lebesgue integral that will generalize the Riemann uh, integrals which is only defined over the intervals so so this 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 problem is more general for any function which prepares us by the way to discuss the issue of uh, general measures defined on on a set okay so this is very important uh, so le let us before we start, so first of all, what do we have? We have uh, A, which is uh, sigma algebra, okay, of elements from 2 to the power r, or the power set of r, okay? So the, the elements of the sigma algebra A are just subset of r, okay? and we are taking m which is defined on a into the positive numbers including plus infinity so we we may take the value plus infinity remember that what we said before what is the, the in the case of Lebesgue what is the measure of uh, an interval is the length of the interval so if the interval is unbounded its length will be infinite and that's why we, we will have to take plus infinity okay so this is like not a weird assumption. Okay, so first, let us make a basic remark here. Okay, before we proceed with the solution to this problem, so let A and B elements in the sigma algebra A. Okay, so we have the set difference between A and B, which is equal to A, intersect the complement of B. So because A is a sigma algebra, so we know that A is stable by taking the complement. And this is very important. This property is crucial. Why? Because in the case of topology, okay, if you look at the set of open sets, the complement of these open sets will give us what? The uh, closed set. So uh, in the case of a sigma algebra, Okay, in particular the set of Borel sets, then which is the smallest sigma algebra which contains closed and uh, open sets, you see that it is stable by what? By the complement. So if a set is Borel, its complement is Borel, and this is uh, fundamental compared to a difference with the topology. Okay, in terms of looking at the open sets, the class of open sets and the class of closed sets. In any case, so. Uh, now what do we have? So the first problem we want to show that in fact the dysfunctional M is monotone. Okay? So we need to prove this. Okay? So let A and B elements in the sigma algebra A and assume A is a subset of B. Okay? So, note that B, in fact, is going to be equal to A union uh, B minus A. Okay? So, we just saw that B minus A, A and B minus A belongs to the class A and therefore uh, we can take the measure and okay, A intersect B minus A is empty. So these are two different elements from A which implies that using the properties we have on M that the measure of B is going to be equal to the measure of A plus the measure of B minus A 
uh, I'm, I'm using the word measure but I, sh I should say just M off um, abusing here so if you hear me say the word measure I meant M off okay so since M of A since M of B minus A is positive or equal to zero then the measure uh, M of A will be less than M of B okay so M is monotone two uh, so we want to show that M of the empty set is zero provided M is not identically infinite identically infinite on A because we may have M of A is equal to infinity for all elements A in the subfamily A okay so let A belongs to the class such that the measure of A is finite okay or M of A is finite okay then what do we have we have A so first of all from 1 okay from 1 we know that M of the empty set which is less or equal the measure of A is going to be less than finite. So the, 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 the M of the empty set will also be finite. Okay? Finally, we have A, which is equal to A union the empty set. They are disjoint, so the measure of A is going to be equal to the measure of A plus the measure or M of the empty set. Since everything here is finite then this will force m of the empty set to be equal to zero as claimed now the third one the third one is a little bit trickier okay so let me make something here very interesting that comes from set theory okay it has nothing to do with uh, with uh, uh, the issue of measures and uh, and Lebesgue approach is, is, is an exercise from set theory. Okay, so assume that you have an, an uh, a bigger a big set X, and you have a n's, which are subsets of X. Okay, and so from here, what we are going to do is we are going to construct. So here there exists b n's. Okay, which are pairwise disjoint from each other. Okay, from each other, such that the union of the A ends is equal to the unions of the B ends with B n is a subset of A n for n greater or equal than one. Okay, this is very. It's just an exercise of of uh, coming from set theory. This is very, very commonly used in real analysis, for example, and other areas, by the way, not only in, uh, I have seen it in linear algebra, etc., etc., okay? So how do we do this, okay? So first, you set B1 equals A1, okay? And then, you take B2, which is A2 minus A1, okay? So let us just say something here, okay? Uh, between these two. So what do we know? We know it's easy to see that B1, sorry, B1 union B2 is exactly A1 union A2, and it's obvious that B1 is a subset of A1 and B2 is a subset of A2, and the intersection between B1 and B2 the empty set. So B1 and B2 are disjoint, okay? B1 is in A1, B2 is in A2, and their union gives you exactly the union of A1 and A2. So this is a very simple exercise on set theory that the listener may may practice on it. So once you have done that, then 
how do we proceed with all of them this is sequence of sets so b3 would be a3 minus a1 union a2 okay and how do I get my bn so bn will be a n minus a1 union a2 union a n minus 1 okay so I, I will leave it to 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 check that uh, in fact we have what we said meaning that the union of the bn's is equal to the unions of the an's uh, bi intersect bj is empty sorry is empty for i different from j and bn is a subset of an for all n okay so uh, now so this is coming from set theory yeah? so now back to our problem okay and we are looking at number three right question number three so what we have to, s to notice here is that from the ENs okay we will construct the BNs as before okay and what we need to do is to check that BN belongs to A this is the question for every N okay so again what is BN from what we said this is EN minus E1 union E2 union EN minus 1 okay so this is equal to EN intersects okay the complement of E1 union E2 E union EN minus 1 and if we use the properties of the mover this is just the intersection of all the EI's complement from 1 to n minus 1 so either we stop at here or we can push it to here so even in the first case for example here we can just say that E1 in union E2 in union EN minus 1 this ones here belongs to A by uh, the fact that uh, A is uh, so E1 union E2 union EN minus 1 belongs to A since A is an algebra sigma algebra okay then the complement will belongs to A and the intersection with EN belongs to A so so the BNs okay belongs to A okay now we know that the measure of the union of the ENs would be equal to the measure of the union of the BNs since the BNs are disjoint to each other this is Sigma this is our main assumption fundamental assumption okay Sigma of this by monotonicity of M we know that each m, each bn has a value m of bn less than m of en because bns are included in en which implies the inequality that we wanted to prove.